Hmm, do you ever wonder how your thermos keeps your coffee hot or your iced tea cold? Well, it's because not all heat was created equal. If I fill this Erlenmeyer flask with water at 50 degrees Celsius, will it stay warmer than if I filled this flask with air at 50 degrees Celsius? That's right, the water would stay hotter for much longer. That's because of two reasons. First of all, water has a higher specific heat than air. Specific heat is CP, and it stands for how much heat something can hold. The other reason is because water weighs a lot more than air. And that is represented by the M in the equation. M stands for mass, so water is a lot heavier than air. So let's talk about each one of those variables. M stands for mass, as we already talked about. CP stands for specific heat. This is constant based on the chemical or compound that you are using. And DT, or delta T, is the change in temperature. Obviously, no heat is given off from an object if it doesn't change any temperature. It either has to drop or increase in temperature for heat to be released or absorbed. And don't forget, in the chemical processes, how much energy is released is denoted by delta H. For this lab, we will be using an extremely high-tech and expensive calorimeter. I present to you the coffee cup. So we will be using a coffee cup as our calorimeter. We can use a little base to hold it in place if you want. Um, we will be using the lid to insulate the top. And to mix it, we will put together a little mixing device kind of like this, which we will then poke a hole through the lid so that we can mix our substance like this. and we will use a vernier temperature probe through the top. Be sure to keep the lid on and stir often. Now this, my friends, is a dual purpose heating and stirring plate. Typically it's called a hot plate. As you can tell, if you turn it on, we will see our stir bar begin to spin. Similarly, we can turn on the heat to heat up one of our sub one of, to heat up our water. We can tell if the water is hot enough by inserting a temperature probe and making sure that we have reached our desired temperature. Be careful as the hot plate will remain hot for an extended period of time. Now simply mix your hot and cold water in your calorimeter in equal parts and you should be able to tell the efficiency of your calorimeter. We will take approximately 30 grams of our metal pellets, place them in a test tube, and place them in boiling water, or water at our desired temperature. Clearly, here our water is not boiling, but you will want your water to be boiling. Once the metal has been inside for about five minutes, we can assume that they are now equal temperatures. We can then go ahead and take our metal pellets out and put them into our coffee cup calorimeter. In a similar fashion, we will also react an acid and a base in the calorimeter to see what happens. The final step, though, is quite interesting. Here we will mix magnesium with hydrochloric acid and observe the reaction that ensues. As you can see, the magnesium violently reacts with the acid. As it is slowly dissolved, remember, And that's all for today's lab, folks. So, I'll leave you with this. Did you know that silicon in Spanish is the same? See. Si.